not quite sure I've done this, but I've got three shirts and one of them's the wrong size. I've got to go back and change it. Who does that? My anxiety is through the roof right now. Um, not just because of vlogging in public, it's like cardinal sin in England, but I'm about to go into Oxford High Street, which if you don't know, it's like one of the busiest, if not the busiest high street in London. Uh, massive disclaimer, I wouldn't normally shop there, but behind it, you've got Soho, which is home to like all these amazing film places. You've got sound design companies, edit companies. Let's go have a look. I bought a shirt the other day, but it's the wrong size, so I wondered if it's possible to get it swapped. Yeah. Boom. I forgot to mention there's also a banging vegetarian area around there. You can get, um, there's a veggie prep, and there's like three or four different veggie restaurants there. Really good. And hey presto, a shirt that fits. Okay, so today is not actually about my shirt, as nice as it is. Today is International Women's Day. And the world needs more girls like you. Now, if you don't know what that is, then where have you been this year? Because 2017 has been a massive year in terms of female equality and empowerment. And do you know what? It's been well overdue and it has been amazing to see. Because when it all came out, all the truth about Harvey Weinstein and how the industry was protecting those sort of people, it shook the entire industry, the entire world. And rightly so. So what I want to do today is talk about four incredible female filmmakers of the UK and talk about why they're so brilliant. This year could be a huge turning point when we look back in a couple of years time. But we've got to keep that world turning and whilst I know we won't take any ownership of that, I feel as a white British male I'm in a bit of a privileged position and it's a stupid not to try and use that as a platform if I can to help promote people that are just so ridiculously amazing and don't get the exposure. So let's start with one of my absolute favorite cinematographers of this day and age, Rina Yang. This woman is class, there's no other word for it. Lives in London, but born in Japan. She studied art growing up and that influences her work massively because she just has such a unique way of crafting color and texture. She works a lot on film, as you'd expect with someone from an art background, and she uses natural light, but also neon light of blues, greens and reds and really brings it together just so beautifully. She does music videos, commercials, narrative. Two Wolves, you gotta watch it, it just it encapsulates a feel and a vibe that I'm really into. And the colour, the way she uses different oranges and it's just great. The Weeknd, that is a perfect example of how she can use both natural light and neon light together and really make it sing. Follow her on Instagram, she's always out shooting somewhere. As a cinematographer, she's won a hell of a lot of things and rightly so. Now she's making huge headway in the industry. You need to follow her, hands down, just one of the absolute best DPs going at the minute. Rina Yang, what a woman. Number two is a writer and director based in the UK, Kate Heron. Kate Heron is amazing. She starts off writing short films doing like little character pieces, little comedy character pieces. The first one I ever saw, called Rest Stop. So great, such a good example of how you can use one location, like two actors, and really get not just a performance, but get a whole complete piece. And now she's doing things with Idris Elba, like 5x5 Five Five is a wonderful film. It's very different from her other work. And then she's even doing things like Smear, completely different, so left field. What it does is give her portfolio of all these different wonderful pieces. I watched all three of them at um, a BFI event in London and she was doing Q&A after, after all her films were being screened. It's inspirational, like you have gotta check it out. I really recommend Kate Heron. Just a wonderful writer and director in her own right. Number three is a vlogger. So some of you might think filmmaking and vlogging are different entities and to a point I'd agree with you because the way I make my narrative and commercial work is very different from how I vlog. I'm still trying to learn how to vlog properly. But it's not not filmmaking, it's a different type of filmmaking. You should not put down vlogging because it is so hard. There's a lot about it that just takes a different skill set you need to learn. Hazel Hayes is not only a vlogger and a writer director, but she's also an interviewer. And in her vlogs, she interviews people like the director from The Shape of Water. And she really gives across her own understanding and learnings. 
as well as bringing them in from top level people. She is a wonderful UK vlogger. I've got a lot of time for Hazel Hayes. Follow on YouTube and you will start picking up so many useful insights. Really top, top vlogger. Now my fourth and final filmmaker, fourth and final filmmaker, my fourth and final female filmmaker, wow. Wow, right? Yeah. Great, thing. amazing. It's a filmmaker called Jessie Ailes. Documentaries and short form branded content and she nails it. The way I see her is she's on a similar place to where I am in terms of she has to produce, direct, shoot, edit and she does them great. I remember pitching for a funding opportunity about a year ago to make a food based branded content. Had a great idea, got good skills, I thought I've got a good chance here and I didn't get it and I was gutted. Then I found Jessie Ailes recently and she had won it. She had got the pitch to make something called Mr Ripple. There's a story been out here about 30 years ago. The Irish people ate more ice cream per person than the rest of Europe. But whether that's true or not, I don't know. I totally get why they went with her because the content is great, the character is great, the story is great. And you know, for someone who is doing all the things that they are, like you, unless you're doing that yourself, you don't understand how hard it is. And also, Flower of Africa is wonderfully coloured and graded and shot and you see a different aspect in each film. You see great storytelling, great narrative, you see great colour, you see great cinematography. Like, hands down, one to watch there. She's going to be big in two, three years time. All of these filmmakers are going to be big. There's so many other female creators out there who are doing great things and do you know what? I don't know enough if like barely any of them. What would be great is if you know any, put them down below, tag them. Let's try and get some female filmmakers connecting. You know, that's what filmmaking is, it's collab. I would love to work with more female filmmakers. I think there's so much that is lost by not having their influence more on set. So please, please, please share, like, not for me, and I'm not trying to own this in any way or take anything from it. I just want to make things easier for everyone. So that's all I've got to say. Happy International Women's Day if you're a female filmmaker. Happy International Women's Day if you're female anything. My piece done. I'll see you next time.